not mad. It's Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening with blog chat? What are we doing? Have we taken over? I think we have. Yeah. <laughs> it, wait a minute. It, it, wait, is, is this blog chat or is this Instagram? <laughs> it's, it's you and I this week, my friend. It's you and I this week. So here both we are. Nights, right? Exactly. Both nights. A one, two punch. And uh, let's see. I, I see the people in. Um, hello to all of our YouTube subscribers. I see hey, Ken Lee's here and he hey, has everyone. a book. A night all night photography. Hey, That's Ken. right. Awesome. Uh, Julianne, Eunice. Hey, everyone. So happy to see you guys. Today is Tuesday, June 16th. And again, my name is Gabriel and we've got Lance Kymig. Lance Kymig here. And tonight we're going to talk about night photography books. And, and uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of a top 10 list. It's a, it's the ultimate starter set, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, FYI, you know, this is Lance's top 10, but as you can see right here, I've got five of those books in the top 10, which Lance, when you made this blog post this weekend, I definitely spent some time and money on books, books, you know, Amazon and other book uh, oh, sellers. You? So well, thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm 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 kind of amazed that you only have five of them because I think you have slightly more photography books than I do. So, right. I mean, I, I'm I'm at maximum density right now. I've got two very large book, well, three very large bookshelves. Two dedicated one, one, two, three, four. I have four shelves dedicated to monographs. Wow. Two and then four other shelves dedicated to just photography and sort of other things, but. Uh, yeah, I need more space. So I need more walls. You so. might have to move out of Brooklyn and into some place where you can get bigger rooms. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, but, you know, I'm very excited. I mean, I think, uh, right, the, you've spent some nights over at the house and we, I always leave you a little free time to enjoy the bookshelf. Maybe maybe I put out a, a few books uh, that I suggest. and Absolutely. And, and we, we've just, obviously, uh, you being... The modern day father of night photography history. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you are the person that's kind of collecting night photography history. You did it in your amazing book, the first edition, um, uh, you know, on night photography, finding your way, right? Find your way in the dark. Yep. And yep. it has uh that first chapter, right? Yeah, I'm just glad he didn't call me the grandfather of night photography. <laughs> well, exactly. Ah. <laughs> well, our kids will be calling you that. Yeah, right. <laughs> or I mean, our cats will be calling you that. These kids <laughs> today. <laughs> so um, I, you, I, let me just first ask you, like, I, I'm so, that was like, I mean, I knew about you over your nocturne stuff, but then it was this, that you were kind of taking the reins of, of the history of night photography. And that just, you that was such an amazing resource and a lot of great information that a lot of it, some of it's well-known like Brassai, but others are, are lost. And so kind of what led to that and why, why this interest in the history of night photography? Because that ties right into the books as well. Yeah, well, there, there were two things really. Um, and, you know, somehow it all goes back to Steve Harper, um, you know, my night photography mentor at the Academy of Art in San Francisco. Um, and he started all of his night photography classes, sessions, with a, a lecture and a slideshow on the history of night photography. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that was kind of a, excuse me, um, that was something that really kind of stuck with me and, and, you know, going to art school, you always look at the work of other photographers and, and history of photography is uh, something to, of value to, you know, that you can learn a lot from what has come before, what other people have done. And, um, I, you know, I really enjoyed that. And I, I, I kind of tapped into that. Um, and then when, um, you know, I met actually through Steve met Tim Baskerville, the founder of the mm -hmm. Nocturnes, um, night photography group in, in San Francisco. Um, he had actually, uh, and I'm, I'm killing myself now because I have not been able to find mine, but he had a big stack 
of this catalog. It was a museum exhibit catalog that um, Keith Davis, curator of American photography at the Nelson Atkins Museum in St. Louis, which by the way, when we do the Gateway Arch, we are definitely going to the Nelson Atkins Museum. Okay, gotcha, um, all right, done. So Keith Davis, the curator there, had put together an exhibit of night photography, historical chronology of night photography at the Nelson Atkins Museum. And he had, the, he had a printed catalog, which Steve, I guess, used as a, as a reference for his classes. And I got a copy of it from Tim. It's like, you know, flipping through it, like, oh, look at all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a couple of them, but damn, if I can find it, I unpacked all my books and I don't know where the hell they are, but it was, uh, it was glorious. And this was in, um, you know, the mid eighties when he put this show together. So that was, as far as I know, um, other, yeah, I mean, that's really the only history of night photography exhibit that's ever been held anywhere. Um, I don't was, think of any what, recent. <laughs> yeah, know? that's for sure. You know, I, I did that. I put together that show called uh, Darkness, Darkness in 2010. Um, and that was primarily contemporary night photographers, mm -hmm. but it was, it was kind of a survey. Um, I think maybe it's time for another one. Might be. It 10 might years be. later, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great reason right there for sure. So, you know, it was it was Steve lighting the fire and then seeing that catalog and it had um a lot of a lot of photographers from the early part of the 20th century that a lot of and granted a lot of them were not, you know, night photographers per se, but had a couple of cool images like uh, mm -hmm. Adolf Fassbender. Um, let's see. Oh, um, oh, uh, oh, geez. What's her name? Oh, one of the, one of the um, um, Post Wolcott. Okay. What was, what was her first name? Marion Post Wolcott? Yeah. Yes, that sounds yeah. um, she had a couple of night images. Uh, you know, there's, of course, Bernice Abbott's famous um, New York at night from, I think it's from the top of the Chrysler building. Yep. Um, yep. And a bunch, you know, a lot of the early pictorialist photographers. Stiglitz, of course. Of course. Um, they're interesting in the early history of night photography. There, there was this exchange, this cross, cross Atlantic exchange between England, France and the U.S. Uh, people exchanging bragging rights for night photography first and different film developing recipes. Um, <laughs> and when, when Stiglitz caught a hold of um, Paul Martin, the English photographer Paul Martin's early night photographs of, of London, he started going out in, in New York and photographing and being so influential in New York, you know, as founder of Camera Club of New York and the 291 Gallery, um, editor of Camera Notes, um, you know, he had major influence. So there were a lot of other photographers like... Uh, um, we could uh, say that that put night photography on the map. <laughs> in this country, <laughs> yeah, yeah for, for sure. I mean, that yeah. there had been... Um, you know, night photography experiments going going way back um, in, into, uh, you know, around 1849, 1850, Whipple photographing the moon on a, through a telescope at Harvard. And, a daguerreotype. Um, and then Whipple also, the same, the same guy, when they installed um, really early electric lights on Boston Common in 1863 or something, he went out mm -hmm. and did uh, night images on Boston Common in 1863. So, uh, there's another guy, um, an, a really unknown, largely unknown photographer, uh, J.A. Frith from Bermuda, who did uh, supposedly did photographs by moonlight prior to uh, Steichen's famous photographs of, of uh, um, Rodin's sculpture of Balzac. And that uh, those are kind of widely accepted as the first photographs by moonlight. But this guy Frith in Bermuda supposedly did it sooner. Um, that's somebody I haven't been able to really track down yet, but you know, there's so, so many early experimenters, uh, they're really groundbreaking every, you know, you, you think what we do is trial and error, but you know, these, <laughs> yeah. this stuff was one plate, <laughs> you know, you know the, the, 
the trials and tribulations, the stuff they had to go through just yeah. to make an exposure was, you know, incredible. So, so we yeah. have the history, we have a nice little history in, in, in your first edition. And then I love that in your second edition, and of course the reason to buy both books, you know, you one you reason of, to buy both yeah, exactly. books. <laughs> one of the reasons the main, well, for me, one of the main reasons, but, uh, is that now you went into the history of, of light painting and that's really cool too. I don't want to go down that road because we still got your top that's 10 books post. to go, that, your top 10 books to go through tonight. Yeah. Um, but what I, and also, you know, as your, you know, you've continued this now with the, our series, our blog series called Muses from the Past. Um, right. And that's, and that's continuing to feature, like I see Ken Lee saying the Vargas brothers from Peru, you did a feature on them, I believe in our blog. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you try to do that a couple times, three or four times a year as you either unearth new ones or kind of really feature some of those other ones that yeah. don't well, maybe if, have books. If our content manager would allow it, that, they would be pretty much the only blog posts I ever wrote. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so and to date um, in that series, I've really concentrated on the lesser known photographers. You know, we haven't done Stiglitz. We haven't done Steichen. We haven't done Brassai or Bill Brandt or, you know, or Winston Link or, or Michael Kenna, not that he's from the past, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, any of the giants of night photography, we really haven't covered them yet. And I, cause I, I wanted to, you know, introduce people to the amazing work of, uh, you know, people like Aubrey Bodine from Baltimore or, or, you know, the Vargas brothers, uh, well, uh, the stuff that, right, people might not be aware of. Um, exactly. Right. So we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see two of my favorites in, in this stack here. And in just a so, few moments. Excellent. Right well, exactly. So uh, let's start off by just, you know, this is a blog chat. So we got to show the blog. Um, so I'm going to share the screen here, folks. And let's just take a look at it. We're going to do a little bit more. Um, obviously with, with really looking, we're going to take a look at some books that deep dive in, but we basically, this is, this is one of your shelves. It looks like Lance, huh? It, it is. That is the night photography textbook shelf. Uh -huh. I love your editions that are in languages. I don't even know. <laughs> That's so cool to see your book in like, you know, like that. It's, you know, yeah, there's, there's a couple of them that I never got copies of, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, like there's a bit of night photography education out there. So the 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 that's funny. The first version of the first edition of my book, the Chinese edition of the first version, they changed the cover photo and used the photo that wasn't even mine. Oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. At least okay. it was a photograph from the book. But anyway. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, this, this is, uh, something that Chris and I had been talking about doing for a while. And, you know, I know you being a collector of photography books, it's, it's kind of funny that it's taken us this long to, uh, you know, to write and, and talk about them. And books are a little bit easier, a little bit, uh, more accessible and obviously cost a little bit more than the prints. We'd love prints from some of our favorites, but, uh, having a book. Uh, you know, I remember I went to Michael Kenna's gallery one time in New York and I was like, I, I, I really upset, you know, uh, the gallerista there because she spent two hours with me and I just, I could not choose a print. I was ready to buy <laughs> cash in hand, a beautiful eight by 10. And I just thought yeah. like, you know what? I just, I'm, I'm sorry. I love the books. I can't make a decision. I don't know what my, is oh, my, geez. my favorite. So I, I don't know. I, I will come back at some point, but. <laughs> you know, when, when I first started looking at his work, um, prints were $600. Yeah. Yeah. They were, this was like 10, 15 years ago and eight by 10 was about two to $4,000. Yeah. Was so that six that? by six image on an eight by 10 print. Yeah. I love the size. I actually love the size. I think it's, they're just chair, you know, keepsakey, you know, and just beautiful that, right. that small. What I, what, so. I, what I really love, one of the things I love about his work is that, you know, he has had this razor, razor tunnel vision where he just does what he wants to do. He doesn't follow trends. You know, everybody else is making monstrous prints. Nope. 
he does his his thing. Yep. Um, and there, he sticks with film because he likes it. He does his yep. own printing. Um, After being the master printer for Ruth Bernhard, you think you know a thing or two. That's right. <laughs> you know. So yeah. Well, yeah. so let me. Is this so? We've got ten books. These are your top ten, right? Well. Or how do you, how we and, and and what order are we talking about? Was this an order of there? Or we're going to go through them in chronological order, so okay. it's not certainly not you know favor, not necessarily all these are my favorite, but I I think they're really important ones, and for photographers that have maybe a number of different books, it's you know it's it's either a significant body of work or a good survey and over overview like you know we were talking about this when i was writing the post you know that with michael kenna he the guy the dude has published some something like 40 some books <laughs> um not all of them have have night images in them but it's really hard to pick just one and, and we didn't we got two we snuck two in the list but um good but job. It's, it's hard to narrow it down <laughs> all right so should we kick it off you ready yeah yeah, and so these are books, these are really books that, you know, you are audience. Uh, if you got room on that shelf and you're into night photography, these are probably 10, I would say, iconic books that really could help inspire you um, to seize the night. One of them is a little bit inaccessible, though. Right. Yes, I don't even have it. <laughs> Neither one of us have it. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway, let's, let's start off okay. with... And I apologize for the glare off from the light there. It's a glossy yeah. cover. This is um, Brassai, Hungarian photographer working in Paris in the early, late 1920s, early 1930s, Paris de Nuit. This is his, his original book published in 1932 was a spiral bound book of photogravures. Spiral bound, imagine that. Wow. Um, this this copy, and this, by the way, this was the first book of night photographs, exclusively night photographs ever published. Um, and 1932. Hugely influential. I mean, there had been other night photographs published, but not a book of nothing but night photographs. Paris de Nuit, 1932. This version is uh, the 1987 Pantheon version which is also printed in photogravier. So it's the printing process. It's not offset lithographic printing. It's, it's respecting the original process <clears throat> that, that he used um, or, or that was published in his book originally. And, you know, it's, they're, they're amazing. The, the highlights are just on point, right? They're, they're just yeah. with that photogravier you really get very controlled highlights. Yeah, so this book, this version, the 1987 Pantheon version, um, I think it's going for about a hundred bucks right now uh, on the used market. It used to be uh, for used books, you would online anyway, if you couldn't get to a store, ABE books was the place to go. But now um, you, they're still there, thankfully, and I do shop from them when yep. I can. It's definitely. It's a, uh, it's a collective of booksellers, but Amazon is doing the same thing now. So you can, you know, you're not just buying from Amazon, you're buying from anybody who sells on Amazon. So yeah, this, this version is about a hundred bucks. It's worth the extra money f over the 1998 version um, that was uh, print, printed in offset printing and the, the image quality is just, you know, it's not the same. But that book you can you can pick up rather inexpensively for you know half the price of the of the version we're showing here. And doesn't the newer version also kind of combine two of his books? Wasn't it like it doesn't? Mm -hmm. It's the Secret no. Life of Paris, or is that? that I know I have that There's book an, as well, but I thought there was one version, and maybe it's not Paris at Night, but maybe it was a, a version of Versailles that just. A, a, more of a compilation that has yeah yeah that. there's a, there's a there's a two for um, and there's also a big massive. Mm -hmm. um, Hungarian version. No, what do you, <laughs> no, what, do you what do you call it? Uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but um, yeah, there there's a, a, a just total mind fart on on the 
retrospective, basically, ah, yeah. of, of his work. Mm -hmm. um, but no, the um, the 98 version of Paris de Nuit is just Paris de Nuit. Um, but one of the things that's really cool about that book was there were so many photographers who were inspired by that work and, um, you know, pu published work, printed work, started shooting at night because of Brassai. And, uh, you know, interesting note about, about him, um, he, came f he came from Budapest to Paris in 1929 uh, to become a painter. And he, one, one day he, he met a fellow Hungarian, Andrei Kertesz, who did some night photography himself. And Kertesz took Brassai out on the streets of Paris photographing at night. And that changed the course of history. And that was it. No more, no yep. more painting. He's going to become, yeah, you know, the night photographer, the original. Uh, you know, he's going to paint with light. <laughs> right. Yeah, he painted with uh, magnesium flash powder, which which led uh, Picasso to give him the give him the nickname of the terrorist because of the <laughs> explosive nature of uh, of flash powder. So. Nice. I just love you know I love that uh, Pantheon version too because. It's this these beautiful quality images. Uh, it's it's on black paper, but then also the black border on it. It's, it's the glossy I, black border on the map. Yeah, I I, I feel like I, I I feel like I'm actually looking at prints. You know, I feel like the, the this you know is just a really really nice quality. So definitely highly recommend that. Um, and Jerry is saying that there's a Prasai monograph at the Denver Public Library. So right. let us know which uh, which one that is. Um, uh, Jerry, and uh, see if we have that on our radar. But uh, yeah, it's it's super important to just be to know and understand Versailles' work, and obviously the importance, which led to the second book on your yeah, list, right? I think because we both led... have it on our stack here, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. Oh, here we go. We yeah, up. London Night. Ooh, well, you've got the glossy. I've got the non-glossy version. It's it's a protective plastic wrap, uh, yeah. um, you know, Probably protecting the jacket well. there. So, um, so th this is a collaboration between John Morrison and Harold Burdekin. Um, they are two uh, British photographers. One, one is a writer and both are photographers. And um, they're relatively, you know, unknown. They're, you know, considered, not considered significant figures in the history of photography in general. Um, but this book was published two years later in 1934. Um, and right in the, um, the preface or the introduction, um, this is the, the beginning of it. Let me put on my little reading glasses here. We're having our fire, fireside chat moment here. So um, the introduction here is by, is by Morrison and he writes, Night, Paul Morand has remarked with Gallic shrewdness is not the negative of day. It is commonly so regarded as antithesis to day, a direct and complete reversal of the order process preceding it. A darkness where there was light, a void where there was wholeness, a silence where there was a sound, a hiatus, and it, a sneeze coming out in a second, an interruption, a denial. How true. Anyway, Paul Morand, um, he's quoting the introduction to this book <laughs> by one Paul Morand. Nice. So, um, you know, they're, they're giving kind of a, you know, a front page tribute to, to Mr. Brassai and his influence. And so, this was, this came out, so... Versailles, 1932. This was 1934. Two years later, yeah. Two years later, yeah. okay. Um, and it, this book is also printed in photogravier. Yep. It's blue photogravier. Sanitype. The, the, the images are full of thick, heavy atmosphere. They are, you know, it's rainy, foggy nights. There's no yes. presence of, of human beings anywhere. Um, and the, the image is just, uh, they're just extraordinary. And they're really, um, you know, 
so many of them just perfectly typify, you know, what I think of as, you know, night photography. Mm -hmm. so let me, and I, again, I have... in, insanely controlled highlights, which, you know, what they, they what they were probably shooting four by five, eight by 10 with this. Well, it's glass plates for sure. Yeah. I don't know what, I'm not sure what size they were. Um, but yeah, they were amazing. Come on, let me find there's like one or two images that I'm I'm looking for to to pull out here. Um, yeah, this this one is, you know, uh, that if is one of the best for sure. And again, look at those highlights. Which again, you shooting that on film and getting that perfectly exposed. You know, yeah, not much um, you could do in Photoshop with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this this book, um, I first came across it in Black Oak Books in the Inner Sunset in San Francisco, um, and it was it was this particular copy. Um, it was a hundred bucks at the and at the time, um, I was not feeling particularly flush, and I wasn't I'd never spent a hundred bucks on a book before, and I just was salivating on it. But I put it back on the shelf, and while I go on browsing elsewhere in the photo section, unbeknownst to me, my friend Christian, who saw me salivating on it, bought it and, and gave it to me later. Um, Aww. That's yeah, amazing. So That's a that great was, story. That was, that was awesome. Um, now, was Steve Harper familiar with these guys? No. Mm -mm. No. So this no. is... No, yeah. he wasn't. So, um, and that was probably, um, you know, like 2006 or so. When I, when I first laid eyes on this, I started um, buying up, looking for online on ABE, looking for copies of this. And I bought about a half a dozen of them. None of them were as in good a condition as this one here. Um, they, you know, they had, you know, yellowing on the pages and the, maybe yeah. the dust jacket was gone or torn or whatever. But I was, I was paying like 15 or 20 bucks for them. Um, wow. Yeah, you know, I gave one to Steve, um, and I gave one to Christian later on, and and, and basically I, I I gave them all away. I, I'd have one one more copy in reserve, but um, I and I'm not going to take credit for driving up the price and of these things. But <laughs> now a mediocre copy is over a hundred bucks. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's too bad. I should have uh, I should have sold them to my friends instead. <laughs> right, you could have been you could be retired yeah. on a on a night photography island by now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. So you know, you know, it's funny that book when you I think I don't I, I you definitely introduced that book to me um, probably in your book, and then I went out and got it, um, and that book and the cyanotype look to it that inspired me to teach a workshop up at Woodstock and I did a cyanotype night photography class and actually uh, Klaus was there and a couple other people but I think Klaus of our main core group was was there and we were just so excited we went out into um, a couple of the rural locations up in Woodstock upstate New York and then we would come back and we and we had the TAs make our our digital files into digital negatives and we had cyanotypes, which are, to be honest, of the alternative process, the cyanotypes, cyanotypes are the easiest and, and the safest to mm -hmm. use. But I love that. And for a while, I was I was really getting into it, but I've kind of left that. But that, again, if we think about uh, the color of night and a lot of the cool mm -hmm. tones that are there, it just kind of lent itself to that. Um, so and that was really, uh, again, influenced by this book. So All again. right, cool. Hey, did you know um, uh, Scott Martin did a cyanotype night photography workshop in Mexico City? I don't, not at all. Yeah, yeah. I think he only did it once, but yeah, yeah that was cool. Um, Ken Lee's asking, did Steve Harper have a substantial night photography book collection? Um, and if so, was it because of you? <laughs> no, the other way around, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I was his student. Uh, no, they, totally the other way around. He, he did have... Um, a photography book collection. Yeah. Um, so it, interesting thing about him. I, it's funny. I've been thinking about him a lot lately. Um, he, he passed away in uh, 2016. Um, 
but he was he was such a cool guy i mean what how many of your teachers did you go over to his house and hang out and and make thanksgiving dinner not yeah like we did that special yeah like four or five years in a row and just uh it was cool but um Oh, he, I was, I was going to say, he actually started out on the other side of the camera. He was a model. That's right. That's right. You, you've shared some of those pictures of him as a model. They are hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, He's a madman he, model. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was a, a striking dude in, in the, in the fifties too. Yeah. So. so I think for the next book, we've got to go back to the blog, right? Because we don't, technically have a copy so right let's, let's do it i'm going to share my screen for a minute uh, and then I'll, I'll, i'm going to have you share what you've got but let's just see the book okay. and um and that's so wait now we have london night and now a night in london what 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 gives and yeah, four how, years so later that? <laughs> so um yeah a night in london uh this i think this one is is it 36 or 38 38 uh, 38 yep. So this is uh, Bill Brandt, a uh, well-known English photographer, uh, well-known for a lot of reasons, doing a lot of different things. Um, and this book, A Night in London, also inspired by Brassai's work. And Brandt actually happened to be in Paris at the same time. I don't know that he met Brassai. He was actually working as Man Ray's assistant in Paris. Um, during during the time when when uh, Versailles was was shooting Paris de Nuit, and so when he he ended up back in London and started photographing London at night, and you know he even copied and tried to reproduce several of Versailles' photographs. Mm. Uh, and my favorite story from that is that there's a there's a picture of a prostitute smoking a cigarette under a streetlight on a street corner in Paris. And Brant recreated that photograph using his wife as the as the prostitute. Awesome, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, so, Brant certainly one of the considered one of the giants of photography of the first you know first half of the twentieth century, uh, and into the second. You know, he's mm. he did nudes, he did portraits, he did landscapes, um, he doc he documented. Um, life in London, the, he, Blitz. He, the yeah night photography during the Blitz in London, um, under a full moon when London was dark for the for the German bombings, um, and this book of a light a night in the life uh, of London, and this book uh, is exceedingly rare. Um, copies of it are it. And it's partially exceedingly rare because there was a, uh, well, in the Blitz, the warehouse that was storing the books was bombed and it went up in, in oh. so most of the books were destroyed in, in fire. Um, but that said, what I, what I want to say about that, I, I respect Bill Brandt and his work immensely, but the images in that book they they absolutely pale in comparison to this work. Mm -hmm. I get you know I guess it depends on your your cup of tea, right. but to me this work far exceeds Brandt's work in his A Night in London. Um, so you know I'm happy I have London Night. I wouldn't mind having A Night in London, but um, not gonna not gonna uh, it's not gonna happen. Not gonna drop too so, <laughs> um, a few. I, I've had a. I've had a search in ABE, so I get a notification whenever one of these shows up for yeah. for sale. And one time, uh, a while back, I got a note. I got such a notification for a copy for a hundred bucks in oh. Australia. Uh -huh. And so I jumped on it, and. Um, I, you know, I, I said, you know, I said to the guy, um, this seems like a great price. Are you sure that's right? And he said, well, you know, I've had about a hundred offers for this book. And, um, you know, a couple of people told me that it was worth 
you know, thousands rather than hundreds of dollars. Um, but he <clears throat> he said that he honored his price and and sold it for a hundred bucks to the the uh, the first person who contacted him. So, wow. <clears throat> but any anyway, they I've seen them as as high as as uh, like forty five hundred dollars for copies. And you were caller number nine on that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was more like caller number one hundred, I think. Uh, okay, gotcha. Right. So, so, but. So what do you recommend for brands? Constellation price. Constellation price. What's the way? Yeah. <laughs> London in the 30s. Okay. Um, yeah. So there are, um, you know, we're going to talk more about his work uh, a little bit later when we're talking about Michael Kenna. Um, you know, some of, some of these are, you know, nighttime images. Um they're not, you know, they're human condition, really. Oh, here's a, here's a classic one, you know, um, yeah. this, this one here. But this is an example of Bill Brandt's use of 1938 Photoshop. It's, um, it's actually, and it's kind of a signature of his style. Uh, it's a daytime image printed really dark and contrasty, which he did with yeah. a lot of his work. He was a master printer or, or manipula a master manipulator printer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he had no problem whatsoever, you know, doing whatever he could to get the look that he, he was an illustrator. You know, he was yeah. not a photojournalist. But, you know, the thing is, he um, worked as a photojournalist for, for Life magazine and others. But he definitely blurred the lines between, you know, interpretation and documentation, yep. um, in a way that would be completely unacceptable these days. Yep. So, uh, excellent. Um, and I think um, Ken Lee, which I think I have this book as well, it says that um, uh, uh, Bill Brandt's behind the camera has a chapter on a night in London, which ha which features some of those images. All right. Cool, you know, cool. in there as well. So. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a, you know, obviously it's a, a daytime is, and, and everything, but Bill Brandt is really a, a, if you've not, if you're not familiar with his work, he, cause he is British. So m maybe the Americans don't, <laughs> doesn't get, get translate as much over here, but very important. And, and, and just always was pushing uh, his visions, you know, really challenging uh, the vision. So whether they were the night uh, or whether they were with all sorts of other um avenues it's yeah. he did a lot of different styles and he really seemed to master them all amazing amazing yeah. work I, I love his portrait of peter sellers yeah S sitting on a park bench yeah, yeah. That's, love that one it's all right so what's next beautiful. we 1938 we're, we're gonna jump to we're gonna jump a the lot. sneeze the sneeze still wants to come out at some point yeah we're gonna we're gonna jump way far ahead this is uh steve fitch California photographer. Um, he was um, part of that new topographics group of photographers, Len Jensel and um, John Fall, uh, Roger Minnick, um, Arthur Ullman, uh, Jerry Burchard, all of this group of, of photographers uh, who came out of California in the early seventies. And, and I guess you could even put, um, you could put Mizrak in the, mm -hmm. in yeah. that group as, as well. A lot of them went on to do night images, but this, uh, diesels and dinosaurs long out of print book, uh, from 1976, not super well known. And it's, it's pretty hard to find copies uh, of this one. This is somebody that Steve, knew uh, was you know was in the they were in the same kind of generation um roger minnick who also taught at the academy of art um was a good buddy of of steve fitch and the or is still i guess um they're both both still around and uh um so this this book is you know kind of roadside attractions in the american west mostly in the 70s and um a lot of night images and uh, you know this is the kind of stuff that led to 
photographers like Troy Pava and Lost America and and even our friend Ken and the work that he's doing. Yeah, I don't know. Ken, 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 does, Ken does Ken have a copy? This looks like I, Ken, I Ken should have a copy. I don't know if Ken <laughs> is familiar with this work or not, um, or the or the book, but um, you know, it's Diesels cool. and Dinosaurs right there. That is. Um, so there's some twilight images. There's some you know, some true night images, a lot of neon, um, just a disproportionate amount of dinosaurs. Uh, well, it's California. Yeah, I guess so. Um, this one's not exactly PC, the Big Chief Motel. Oh, boy. He, Ken says he does not have a copy of this one. Let's see if I can beat him to it. <laughs> um, well you know what i don't know if, if i don't know if steve has copies available it's not for sale on his website but he might have some you can go to stevefitch.com gotcha and see um but yeah so cool cool black and white work he had two uh national endowment for the arts grants to do that product project um it was inspired by road trips that he did with his parents as a kid Mm -hmm. And I think Troy Pava stole that line for his, for his own biography. Sure. Cause uh, you know, cause he just, just kidding, Troy. Um, cause he what, said the he said the same things. What, what, it seems like a lot of flash work too. A lot of um, like, or, or just under, under the street lights, like very yeah, well th illuminated. There, there are a few in there that look like they might have some flash on them, but um you know, he he definitely wasn't wasn't a light painter per se. No, was, no, 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 no. That was kind of pretty, pre light painting yeah. as a as a genre, really. Yeah. Okay, so that was yeah. wow, a big jump from thirty eight to seventy six. I wonder. I, I'm I'm curious as to how many other what ha what happened uh, with the publishers on those. Where's the New York at night? Where's the you uh, know. Was, I mean, we could talk about Ouija and his work. Yeah, right? that's right. That's From right. the 40s. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, o, o Winston Link's work. We're going to look at one of his yep. books in a bit, but it's published later. Gotcha. Um, so there, there was there, still night photography happening. <laughs> there there was. Um, Max Yavno in, in LA in the 50s did some night photography. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot happening in the 60s that, I, that I've ever been able to come across. Um, Oh, I'm, I'm blanking on this guy. There was one, one fellow um, who did, oh shoot. And he even, he had a, there was a show of Lynn Seville's work and this guy at Duke in North Carolina um, a while back. He, oh, I'm going to have to remember his name. Um, darn. Hmm. John a bike, but he he did night photographs in San Francisco, uh, India, and something like Oklahoma or some other you know oddball oddball place. Yeah, that's a that's a um, random were, trifecta. Yeah, yeah, they were thirty five millimeter black and white stuff in the sixties, but that's really the only night photo stuff from the sixties I found. Not a whole lot of of monographs. There were a lot of photographers with single night images you know 40s 50s 60s um but uh yeah so jumping right ahead uh, we mentioned yeah, we mentioned the same of the right you mentioned him in the sort of the same sort of uh collective ish right, right. richard misrak um and misrak and arthur ullman jerry burchard were really uh, photographers who were part of the explosion of night photography. And of course, Steve mm -hmm. uh, in the Bay Area in, in the 70s and, and into the 80s. Um, Mizrak, um, he is one of the most collected landscape photographers, contemporary landscape photographers, but he's not widely known outside of the art world um, because he doesn't have an internet presence. He's never had a website. Um, he's never really had a need to. Um, his first book, his first project was called Telegraph Avenue 3 a.m. And it was homeless people on Telegraph Avenue in, in Berkeley. <laughs> <clears throat> and, um, you know, his, it was, the intention was to cause 
change and and to be a publication to raise awareness of homeless homelessness and you know as a, a an activist for social justice um, and he was disappointed that his book although it won all kinds of awards didn't do anything for the homeless people in, in berkeley so he said to hell with that i'm just going to go take pictures of plants in the desert at night and pop a flash on them wow yeah so um so his first images are these um let me pick out a really good one here um this and is he's, this he's is, shooting like four by five you know the eight. first images in this book from the early 70s or from the mid 70s um are Hasselblad two and a quarter okay. black and white film and he was printing on this old Agfa Portriga paper that mm. did this amazing split toning yeah. And they would get, he'd get these amazing, hopefully you can see a little bit of these red highlights in here. Mm -hmm. um, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So he started after telegraph, he went in, and did into the desert, California, and he's popping a flash on cacti for a while. And then Stonehenge, when you could, Stonehenge was more accessible at night. And um, yeah, so this is still 1976, uh, Stonehenge, Standing Stone. So that's kind of probably what got my interest in, in going to Scotland, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he then switched to 8x10 color yes. film, color negative film, which is what he's been shooting ever since. Here's one, uh, the Parthenon in Greece. Wow. This, this one. Star Trails. Yeah. 1979 star trails eight by nine eight by ten color negative film and there are like six or seven little misrak ghosts in here where he popped a flash ah, nice. exposure nice. Um, so and there's there's a number of these from from greece um this one's this one's got a a bunch of little misrak ghosts in there too they're kind of <laughs> hard to see most of them but um, and he's when he switched to this large format uh, photograph camera he started doing 40 by 50 inch prints yes 40 yes. by 50 inch c prints there's some night images from uh, la and new orleans uh, which are to me and hawaii most of which are kind of less interesting and then he went into his uh continuous ongoing series called desert cantos which is documenting it's a a chronology basically of story desert stories of the american west that he's been working on for i don't know 30 years or so um and what what really got me of of these were these photographs of the salton sea after it it flooded mm -hmm. um and this this is uh 80 83 so um you know seeing these salton sea images uh, let's see here's here's another one um you know this inspired me to go and, and check it out go to the salton sea for the first time so so uh, tom pava and i did a road trip to the salton sea in um oh 91 or 92 uh, and most of the stuff that misrak had photographed was gone by that point so yeah. um, so this is uh richard misrak 1975 to 87 um, he has a number of books, which are uh, some some are more accessible than others. Some are a little bit expensive. Um, this how's is this one. How's this one? Um, anywhere from fifty to two hundred dollars. Okay. Um, when I got, I I bought it new. Right. <laughs> so lucked out on that one. Uh, I don't have <laughs> that one. I might have to add that to the list. I, I also want to point out that because of his large shoot, uh, large format shooting capabilities his was the first image on the first ipad oh that's right A apple right he didn't have a digital presence but ironically apple found him and his image was was which is a long twilight shot i'm not going to call it a night shot it's more of a Almost twilight a shot night. you know uh but it was beautiful and that hopefully got him some movement on the gallery scene as well but yeah uh, all right so all right, moving well, right along moving right along uh, and moving across the country, okay. Um, the next two books, I would say, uh, you know, I, I was introduced to both of these by Steve. 
um, at the Academy of Art. So I, I saw this work in 1989 and it lit a fire under my ass that has not gone out yet. Okay. So this is Jan Stoller, Frontier, New York. Um, this, these are medium format, color negative images. Twilight, do you, do you know this book, Gabe? I do not, I'm not familiar. And, until and he's, he's down uh, on Charles Street in the, in the village. Okay. Um, so I've heard of him, but I, you know. I think, um, I think Bob Vizzini knows him. Okay. So any, anyway, this, this work is twilight and night shots shot in the kind of the industrial wastelands uh, around New York city on color negative film in mixed lighting and um, very theatrical. Oh, cool. Yeah, so a lot of them have crazy colors because of the the, the mixed lighting in these. Uh, I always like, always like yeah, that one. That's nice. So, hey, Sandra. She's here. She made yeah. it. All right. So you're gonna have to rewatch for the other for the first five books. Yeah. Right. Okay. Here's, <laughs> here's another one. So this, again, this is Jan Stoller, Frontier, New York. Um, he has uh, a second book of night images called uh, On Planet Earth. Oh, um, yeah. See what, I, see what I mean? They're they're just yeah really super dramatic. This mm -hmm. is a, a batting cage. Oh, that's cool. Um, so love, love this work. He's also um, an inventor, um, has, makes, uh, fabricates all kinds of weird and funky stuff. Cool. Here's, here's one, New York in the, nice. at night in the snow. What's, at night, what subway yeah. station is this? Yep. Can we see? Uh, no, it's an advertisement. It doesn't say, oh, what? Houston Street, Houston and 8th Avenue. Nice. You go back to revisit those. Yeah, that's uh, right. Some, some, some of these locations. Yeah, when um, we do a night photography workshop in New York, we can. Yeah, and we could do some of. Uh... <laughs> well, some of his, or you know, there've been a lot of. Oh you yeah. know, Stiglitz, of course. You know. Yeah. That... There should be. I mean, I know Eunice is asking me to do a night for. She's like, "Where's my book on New York night?" And um, mm. there, there could definitely be a just a New York at night book. I have. Uh, one of uh, I think the wonderful one of the books I chose on the bookshelf is stories of like sort of the history of New York at night, which is a, if you are definitely a New Yorker and into night photography, that's a brilliant book. Well, but we'll get to that. We're jumping ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, All do right. you have uh, do you have Stanley Greenberg's uh, Underground New York book? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's book. a great book. Yeah. All right. So along with Frontier New York. There it is, the first Kenna. The first Kenna. This is Michael Kenna, Night Walk. Uh, you can see Gabe Back it up a little the bit. There. Back it up. But, uh, Sorry, something. the camera's going yeah. in and out of focus yeah. there. So um, this one, um, this is Kenna's early night work, uh, 35 millimeter Tri-X. Uh, now I'm all out of focus. Yeah, here. there you go. Yeah, forgive your, yeah, there, there you go. There You're go. back. Okay. Um, and this, this stuff ranges from his first image, his first night image, I think was, uh, 79. Is it in here? Yeah. It's, uh, Catskill. Huh? Isn't that, is, I love that shot. That's one of my most, that, that's one of my favorite shots. We're going to have to have Matt find that, sh that location. Is that <laughs> that's still there. 1977. <laughs> Um, you know what blows my mind about this book is that it's 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 pretty much all it's all 35 millimeter stuff which is not yeah. I mean you know when you think of Kenna it's, you think of it's he's square yeah well I this mean, is what this is where he started out yeah. um, you know um, he um, he moved from from England to San Francisco and but was traveling from the beginning a, a lot of photographs here of of England where he's from um venice paris i think um, you gotta show that you gotta show that brant the brant yes right uh, at the beginning where you see both brant and kenneth because i think that that's right that's a great thing and to show and to show that how we should 
be inspired and mimic, you know, right. other people's work. So, so Kenna uh, and Bill Brandt were both from Lancashire in, in North England. And Bill Brandt photographed these, these mill towns, um, kind of hard living places in the late 1930s. This is uh, Halifax and also Blackburn in Lancashire. This is York, North Yorkshire. Um, this is Bill Brandt's daytime shot, dark and contrasty printing. Yeah. Looks like a night shot. <laughs> yeah. And here's, it's like positive negative. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is very much. And, and here's Kenna's image kind of re-photographing. Um, this is the the uh, the Dean Clo Mills in, in Halifax. Uh, 1985. Was, so Kenna was back there. Um, and a lot of the images in this book or several of them are, are from these old yeah. uh, mill towns, this English, English mill towns that he went back. Like this, this one has always been one of my favorite ones. This lift it up. There we go. Yeah. The stairway. Yeah. yeah yep. Love that. Yep. That shadow there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think, did, did Kenna know Brandt? Do they ever? Um, I don't know if they met, but he certainly talks about him as an influence. Yes. Yeah. Um, he, you know, he may, he may well have, have met him. He certainly, they certainly could have. Uh, I, I'll ask him that one time when it, next time I talk to him. Yeah. It's a, I think yeah. that's an important, and you know, it's funny because then Brandt did his industrial stuff of the mills and then Ken of course did the nuclear power stations, Radcliffe. So it's kind of, they did mirror each other and influence, you know, or definitely Brandt, you can see the influence on Kenna, but yet he took it and made it his own. Uh, in yeah, his own generation absolutely so um you know brant was a you know more of a uh, he wasn't a polished um he he was meticulous in his photography but he he wasn't a a, a master craftsman in the way that that kenna is they mm. you know they they had different vision they cert certainly in, you know Kenna was inspired by by Brandt's work, but um, I think as as both as an artist and a, and a technician, Kenna you know has exceeded what what mm -hmm. Brandt has done. But but Michael Kenna has always been much more focused, uh, and he's followed his his a single vision throughout his forty year career, where Brandt was just kind of like all over the place doing a little bit of everything. Oh, sure, there goes my light. Uh-oh. 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 Station identification? Yeah, maybe. Here, hold on. I'll show my my version. And uh, let's, I think there's a Radcliffe Power Station book uh, image in here. Amazing that he got access, you know, uh -oh. to these uh, power plants, but just did it simply by saying, hey, showed him a couple prints from the distance and then say, can I get a closer look? And and end up giving prints to the station. And look at that, a rare Kenna Star Trail. Yeah. <laughs> so well, this this book, The uh, Night Walk, is, is fairly uh, available, to my knowledge. It's yep. 50 bucks-ish or something. Yeah, you can even pick it up for less than that. Yeah, look at um, this. Look at this. Friends of Photography, San Francisco. Look at that signature. Hey. Look at that. Oh, nice. We were very excited to have Michael Kenna talk at Optic uh, a couple of years ago. And, and I think both Lance and I brought a stack of books that were like 10 tall to get signed. I, I <laughs> did not, actually. I just bought his new one and, and got that one signed. Oh, you're, well, I guess I was working the B&H angle there. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, shoot, my, uh, my nan light went what dark on me uh oh uh oh luckily yeah. back up we'll do what we can do what do we got or i can yeah. i can definitely show this one if you want to talk about it yeah okay and i can also crank it up a little bit there okay so yeah um o winston link steam steel and stars um link was a commercial industrial photographer from new york um who was a train buff and from 1955 to 1960, he spent a lot of his own time and, and money photographing the last operating steam railroad in the country. Um, 
documenting the end of a way of life, both in, along the railway and also, um, you know, the towns along, along the railway there. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so there are a number of books of Link's work. Unfortunately, um, he didn't really receive notoriety for this work and didn't, uh, there was, there's an interesting long backstory that goes along with his life. But he didn't really receive much recognition for this work until he was about 80 years old. And um, Well, he was a working commercial photography, right? This was sort of a passion yeah. of his. Yeah, yeah. Rural Retreat, Virginia. Love that one. That's, got, that's probably got, my favorite. Got, got a poster of that right over there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you ever happen to be passing through Roanoke, Virginia, on, like on, if you're on Highway 1, on the uh, Highway 81, on the way from DC to Nashville, stop in Roanoke at the at the Link Museum. Sandra, uh, I know you go to yeah, I know you go to uh, North Carolina. Have you been there? It's very um, close. Otherwise, on, there's a rumor we Ridge? might be going. Sandra, were you on the Blue Ridge? Oh yeah, the, yes, she was. So yes, she did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is his most famous image. Right. 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 Which this is just. I, I, I saw this in a gallery like 30 by 40 and I think they were selling it for 10 or fifteen thousand dollars you know <laughs> yeah so he he really um, there's a, a interesting story behind this one you've got the uh, the kids in the car watching the the airplane on the drive-in screen with a train going by um, he set up a massive amount of lights with his own, custom manufactured uh, flash reflector dishes that had like a dozen flash bulbs in each one. He's got them all spread out a little over the place. That's his car in the, uh, in the foreground with these kids in it and the airplane on the screen. Now, if you think about this black and white film, four by five film at night in 1950, 60 something, um, no, it's going to, you yeah. know, it's not going to be a frozen image. So this is the one image that Link did any kind of darkroom manipulation on. And the screen, because of the long exposure, was just white. Like, you know, from Tsujimoto's uh, yeah. theater screens, right? They're just yeah. white. So it was very easy for him to print from another negative this airplane on the screen. And he just wanted to show all these different modes of transportation in one one photograph. So. Perfect. Um, his assistant Thomas Garver said that told that story at a lecture that at uh, uh, the Photo Resource Center in Boston some years ago. I love this one too. Yeah, they're they're so dated, right? You can you can yeah. certainly see the era that this and, and bygone that's era. That that's perfect. You know, from. document your error during the so, day and night. <laughs> so this book is very very affordable. You can pick up used copies for less than twenty bucks, um, and it's a very good. Uh, uh, anthology of his night train images. Here's his, here's his <clears> assistant <throat> and his setup. <clears throat> right there. So um, tonight we're talking about O. Winston Link and his night train photographs. Tomorrow night, um, we're going to talk about all of the other train photographers from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And there were, there were quite a bunch of them. And there is a book we'll show tomorrow night on Instagram that is a collection of that work uh, cool. put together by Jeff Bruce. We're getting cool. down. We're getting down there, right? I, I think so. I think we're, I think we're two more. <laughs> Let me check. I got Let two more. Yeah. Okay. So what's, um, do you so have this, a copy of this other one? I do not. Oh, uh, all right. So you're, um, this is yet another body of work that was in, uh, inspired by Brassai's work. This is, uh, German-American uh, Volkmar Wenzel or Volkmar Wenzel, depending if you're German mm. or American pronunciation here. Um, he was working for National Geographic as a darkroom technician in the 30s and got, a, got his hands on a copy of Brassai's book and went and photographed Washington, D.C. at night in uh, 36, 37, and 38. This book is also available and it's it's pretty inexpensive um it was not published until 1992 um Wenzel was still alive at the time um and this book from this work from the 30s was published then so it's um 
you know, and he, he mentions uh, this that he was, you know, inspired by by Versailles' work. There's uh, the Supreme Court. There's mm-hmm. a lot of these images are on snowy or or foggy nights. Um, you know, that is interesting. You know, that a lot of these books that we're looking at are not your typical. Um, a lot of it's overcast. A lot of it's. I mean, obviously, it's urban, right? So it's like you're dealing with the urban lights and all that conditions um yeah um yeah because you know these these those overcast conditions bring down the contrast and and mm-hmm. add some light to the sky and make it a little bit more uh easier to photograph and i mean you know paul martin figured that all the way out back in uh, 1895 when he's doing the first night shots of london and and, and then uh stiglitz in in a few years later when he's photographing in new york at night uh, yeah. William Fraser, Stiglitz, Alvin Langdon Coburn, Steichen, they're all photographing on wet, foggy, snowy well, they're, nights. They're, fo- they're fog photographers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, this is Washington at night. Uh, Wolkmar Wenzel. Um, How available is that? This is pretty available. Uh, you, can, you can find um, copies for as little as like eight or ten bucks on, on Amazon. Okay right now um wow. entertain the entertain the masses for just a second i wanted to get out grab something real quick sure sure uh, i think sandra's saying that she's going to miss the instagram chat but let me remind you if you cannot or uh, you know stay tuned for the instagram um classes with you know the instagram sessions which uh, are 8 p.m on wednesdays we do save them on our Instagram page. You just not you don't go to the home page. It's sort of the middle page, and it's our IGTV page. But all of the chats are now being saved, so you can watch them at your leisure. Uh, you just obviously we can't we can't see you live and chat with you live, um, but you can always send us a message and tell us what you thought. Boom, where's that from? That's one of his shots, huh? Oh, you're muted. Or. Microphone's out. <laughs> okay. There you go. Boom. Okay. Sorry. I hit the hit the mute button with my elbow. So this is um, uh, Vensel's Photographs, staff photographer, National Geographic magazine. In the National uh, Geographic. April 1940. Boom. Nice. Okay. nice. So this has, uh, let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen full page images uh, of Vensel's Washington, Washington by night, April 1940 edition of National Geographic. Um, I got it on eBay for a few dollars. Sweet. Yeah. So better reproduction, obviously, in the book, probably. But still cool yeah. to see the original yeah. story and byline. That's cool. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So um, how yeah. are we rounding out now the top gonna be, ten? There's gonna be a there's gonna be a run of April nineteen forty searches on eBay, right? <laughs> well, we hope anyway. Wait, hold okay. on, let me do it right now. <laughs> Three, two, one, one, and boom. Yeah. I know that location. Yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah, we do. That's one of the most uniconic pictures of Golden Gate Bridge. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> you have to have biked over to know that, I think. Because <laughs> even if you drive over, you're not paying attention to those lights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is um, uh, Michael Kenna's Night Work. This was, let's see, what year was this published? Um, so this is a collection of Kenna's work, um, night work made over a period of time. It was published uh, by in conjunction between Nazareli Press, who've done mm-hmm. many of his books, and the Friends of Photography in San Francisco, with uh, the preface by Deborah Klotchko, the former director of the Friends of Photography, which sadly uh, shut down some some while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an introduction by Bill Jay, um, who actually also Great. photographed uh, and did a one picture book by Nezreli of Bill Brandt. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. An original silver print of Brandt in there. And uh, also in here is um, Michael Kenna in conversation with photographer Tim Baskerville. Photographer Tim Baskerville. Photographer Tim Baskerville. <laughs> so Tim uh, <clears throat> interviewed. Uh, How did Tim get that gig? That's a coup. Um, He's he's interviewed interviewed him a couple of times. Um, okay. Met him through met him through Steve Harper. Yeah. And um, you know he's he's a really good writer. Uh, okay. And, and and has always been a, a community builder. So um, Michael asked him to to do this interview because they had done a uh, an email interview for another project uh, some years earlier. Uh, Did Michael Kenna ever talk at your? night photography class did steve harper ever get him to come talk yes um oh. and right right when that's where i first learned of him and he you know right when just, this had been, just been published wow so so yeah um and that was you know that was amazing because he was still a, a young guy he was just getting started he'd been picked up by stephen wertz gallery in san francisco but um you know wasn't he hadn't reached his anywhere near his, his peak of, of fame. Stephen Wertz gave him the Hasselblad. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, Stephen Wertz probably said, you know, yeah. you got to step it up a notch, baby. Yeah. Um, but he came um, to a couple of Steve's classes. Uh, and, you know, I always made that went back to make a, a revisit. And um, yeah, it was hugely inspiring and, and really, uh, you know, just kind of set the set the course in motion, and and um, you know, he's been hugely influential on on my work over the years, and I think my my style has has evolved evolved and you know moved moved away a bit, but you know, he certainly was a, a huge huge influence early on, and and somebody I, I respect enormously. And, and this book is more of a greatest hits, right? So you'll see, you'll see, you'll see a lot of right. the night walk in there. Yes, you see yeah. a little bit of Montmartre. You see a little, quite a few of a lot of the what uh, what became books later on, full things. Yeah. So it's a real nice, yeah. That's one of the night walk images. So the reproductions in this book are much better than the yes. than the night walk book. And yep. they're it's bigger, it's better printing. It's a more expensive book. Right, it'll oh, cost you a hundred bucks probably at least. Yeah, um, Ooh, mine was 170. There's yeah, a uh, a lovely Star Trail image. Um, yeah, he, he's he's, and one of the interesting things about about Michael is that he has, you know, he's always said that you know don't don't call me a night photographer. Yeah, I'm just a photographer. I photograph in the daytime. I photograph at night. It's it's not any different and. You know, he's he's always said that. Well, I don't. You know, I don't really care if my day images look like night or my night images look like day. Um, and that, in a way, is is really reminiscent of of Brandt and his way of working too. That you mm -hmm. know, it's the it's not so much the process, but the end result that that really counts. And um, you know, so many of us who we call ourselves night photographers. Uh, as as it's like a special special thing and he's he's never been like that and I, I don't know if this book was was his idea or or Nazareli press or or, mm. or what have you but you know it's other than the night walk book it's the only one that's you know billed as as uh, night photography exclusively <laughs> Yes, so there, there it is, folks. The, the, the your, your ten most essential books for any night photographer. And I, I asked in the in the chat. So now that you've seen these all, uh, drop it in the chat, folks. Which one of these books is interesting you? Maybe or and which ones have you got that we should add to our list here? Exactly. So speaking of a list, right? What what else came upon uh, uh, out of this? Well, um, something Chris and I have been talking about doing for a long, long time and with all the other projects, just never got around to it. But now it is live and we've I'm gonna got share. I'm gonna the just National share. Parks at Night 
Night Photographer's Bookshelf. Right. So here we have sort of at the end of the blog, we talk about where you can purchase it. Oh, right. The, yes. Yeah, no, that, that's and that's true. There's, so there's a, um, a good list of in-person independent booksellers. Um, if you get the chance, they're, they're mostly in the big cities, as you might expect. Yep. Um, Photo yeah. eye. Tim Whelan, you can really only get to Tim Whelan if you take a, a workshop or something up in Maine. If you're ever in Camden, I, Maine, I highly I just, recommend it. I just got a uh, I just got an email from uh, Elizabeth up there. They um, they lost their lease on the building and the, his bookstore is closed, unfortunately. So I, I, but, there was a time that I was built, I was probably his main uh, resource. I <laughs> so I guess I'll open to Tim Wheel in Brooklyn. <laughs> you mean you mean you, you his main customer or his main source for books uh his customer for sure <laughs> you yeah. know he always um, i always left with a with a with a cardboard box yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't give me a bag <laughs> so we should check in with him and see if he's doing you know yeah. what he's doing now yeah um because he is fortunately that it was such a great resource but a great you know, resource on top of that the, there's in the blog post there's a listing of these bookstores but also some amazing photography libraries and main media workshops in Camden does have a fantastic mm -hmm. photography library. Yep. Um, as does the photo resource center in Boston, uh, the PRC. And um, f a lot of the research that, that I did um, for my history of night photography was, was through in collaboration with um both with Keith Davis, who had curated that earlier show, and with uh, Roy Flukinger at the uh, Harry Ransom Center at UT Austin, um, they have, well, they have the first photograph, the very first photograph on permanent uh, display there, That's uh, right. That's as right. well as a lot of, they have Steichen's moonlight photographs and, and Paul Martin's early 1895 shots of, of London at night. But they also have a fantastic uh, night photography and, or photography library of, of books that you can go and uh, you can see the circulating library or you can make an appointment to see the rare edition. So I got I when I, I was there, I got an appointment and I got my hands on on Bill Brandt's A Night in London. You know, mm -hmm. you're wearing cotton gloves, but yeah. they, let me, you know, they let me check it out and sit at a table with it. So Nice. That's, that's great. Cool. All right, but, so here's the, here's the bookshelf, folks. So basically, we've uh, listed uh, is a really a great resource of of books. Obviously, there's the ones that we've done in the various editions. So you know, if you want the let's see, what is this? The Chinese edition of Lance's, or hey, you know, I've got an Italian. If you got any Italian friends, but I've been trending in Italy lately. Um, <laughs> You're so, trending everywhere, Gabe. <laughs> But there's also, there's books on astronomy, right? Um, I have two of these books. These are great, Stars Above, Earth Below. Amazing, amazing inspirational book. Um, and then this one, uh, the uh, Sun, Moon, Earth also is great um, for the eclipse. Dark Skies, these are books just that are kind of, uh, and Paul Bogart, I was uh, able to see him speak actually at the Grand Canyon um, night, uh, dark sky party. So he, these very few images, this, these are more of uh, just your standard books, but his talks on, you know, his experience with the night and then also his child's and kind of how the night has changed and affects us as human beings. Really beautiful yeah. uh, and important book. Um, Sky Glow is, is, a, is a cool book. I love the project. I'm not a huge fan of the book. It's a little too like glossy. I don't know if you've got a copy of it, but it's a I little, it's sort of just like, you know, um, you know, it's it's a it's a direct print, so it's just got that a, a little too glossy, a little too, you know. I'm used to the monographs, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, the this yeah. book is what I was talking about here, Mark Caldwell. This is a very little known book. I don't, I forget where I came across it, but New York Night: The Mystique in History. So again, this is sort of a historical book on uh, New York at night. And it's it's a wonderful, wonderful book. Actually, I want to reread it, but it kind of goes to, you know, New York, you know, in the 1700s yeah. and, and on and, and just beautiful. The history of, of photography. I mean, if you didn't, if you are doing photography and you haven't read this, the, the Beaumont Newell edition, you know, of history of photography, which only probably goes up to whatever, 
1990 something, but it's still a an amazing, amazing piece of book. Uh, uh, Nancy actually introduced me to this, that she had to read this as part of her art history at Kent State. This was the the mm. textbook guide to photography. For sure, for you know. sure. This is a friend of mine, Robert Yasnick, uh, who works with me uh, a lot. He's on the Bannerman Trust. And he, this is an amazing book. Not as much night stuff, but it's uh, more on history and, and the history, uh, really, if you're interested in uh, the history of uh, a lot of the ruins, especially in the Hudson Valley area. Really, really good, uh, really amazing book. Um, I've done some night photography with Rob. He's a great guy uh, and a really w wonderful book. A lot of what he's uh, photographed no longer exists. So it's a really a nice standing history of older, uh, of an older days. Um, some, yeah, some general uh, photography how-to books. Mm -hmm. um, some other uh, night photography instruction books in, in addition to our own. There are some others out there. Um, <clears throat> Eric Curry's a Any, uh, any book standouts light. here that you want to... Um, yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Oh, and, and well, yeah, Andrew Sanderson's night photography, that green fr framed yeah. one there. Um, if you are interested in doing black and white film at night, that is yeah, the book the to source. get for sure. Yep. Um, and below, down below, Jill Waterman's book too, yep. um, which is um, really one of the first more comprehensive night photography textbooks. Um, and I love, I love Jill's community spirit here. I mean, this wasn't mm -hmm. a book of her stuff. She brought in, you know, a lot of different photographers, a lot of different viewpoints about photographing at night. So. Yeah, yeah, it's really. I think I, I really like that book. That was it's, uh, really, really. It's it's more general night photography because it was kind of like on the cusp of, of digital, which was just mm -hmm. getting started. So, yeah. Um, actually, the day that I got my first copy of Jill's book was the day that I got the call from Focal Press to write my own. <laughs> like, nice. That was Thanks such a cool, cool little coincidence there. One, that nice one, two, inspirational punch. Yeah, for sure. Light reading. I, I'm not. I'm not familiar with any of these. Um, the middle one there, acquainted by the, yeah. acquainted with the night, is a, a quote from uh, Robert Frost. Yep. Um, I'm one who've been acquainted with the night, and it was the, the also the title of uh, Lynn Seville's first book. Yep. But this this is a collection of quotes and stories, short stories about the night. Nice. Uh, that's, that's, a, good. that's a that's a that's a good one. <clears throat> that's a good one. <clears throat> Excuse me. My and goodness. Then, now we got some of our favorite books on national parks. Yep. Which my personal besides Chris's is The Hour of Land. This is I just uh amazing, amazing again. Th there's one picture per subject, uh, but just an amazing look at um, some of the units in the national park system. Some are popular, some little known, uh, but um, Tempest Williams is an amazing writer and her and her family have had a long history, not only with visiting the parks, but also it's interesting because her father worked um, in the, I, I believe in the oil rigging. So it laid a lot of pipe too, mm -hmm. uh, which there was always a lot of, Interesting battles, especially around Theodore Roosevelt, which one of my favorite chapters uh, in this book, but really, really cool to kind of see, uh, you know, the, the needs of the land there. Thank you for uh, for gifting that, by the way. Yeah. So Gabe gave, gave all of us at, at National Parks tonight our own copy of this and said, you must read this. Have you? I haven't. Oh boy! All right, it's this, a, this this is but over. It, but it's not it's it's not on my bookshelf. It's on my nightstand next. That, to that, that's what it's one step closer. <laughs> on the awesome. guilt pile. Exactly, I have that pile too. And then travel, of course, our friends at Atlas Obscura, uh, inspiring us to really uh, go to some really cool places. And the kids' book is not just for kids. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a fun way to kind of look at. Um, and. And then the really good stuff. Yeah, and then here yeah. it is, folks. So here at the bottom, the, the biggest section by far is our our night photography monograph section that has the you know the ten books we just talked about and a whole boatload more of them. Yeah. Um, so these um, the all the books here um, they have links on Amazon or B and H. Uh, a couple of them I have a few extra copies. 
um, uh, available. So they are they are links for sale. Um, if you click on those, uh, they are affiliate links too for either Amazon or B and H. Yep. So it, it helps out National Parks at Night if you if you use those links if you're gonna buy any of these books. But we put it up there not to, as a money making thing, but as a way to share these resources and this all this amazing night photography. Yeah. So get inspired. That's this is this is yeah. This has been a major inspiration for oh, a there's lot Ken's of book. us. Oh, there's Ken's, there it is. Ken's book. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah, Ken, this uh, Ken's book just came out um, late last year. Uh, photo, uh, abandoned Southern California. It's gorgeous um, and great little stories to go with the images too. So, yes, uh, definitely pick that one up. Um, and Eunice just scored a copy of the 19, April nineteen forty National Geographic. Oh, look at that, Eunice on it. Yeah, she's a savvy one. Yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Excellent. And then uh, we got Tom Pava's book and Troy's four books on there, including the one that's just about to come out, The Night Salvage, is uh, available for pre-order there. Oh, nice. W whatever happened to Lynn Seville? Uh, she's, uh, as far as I know, she's still around, still still shooting in Dumbo. Okay. Um, we got three, all three of her books there on, on the yeah. list. Um, yeah, so sp spend spend some time um checking these out there's a lot of a lot of great images here um oh another one we're coming up on reed yalom's uh colonial noir which are mostly night photographs from from mexico do you have that one gabe no i do not where's right that below naked city okay boom yeah really, that, uh, i love that cover that, it's a that. it's a beautiful book and one definitely pick that one up too sweet before eunice gets it <laughs> um, that, you can you don't you won't have to fight over that one there that's out there it's out there cool yeah. great yeah, wow so, so there it is wonderful resource um got we hope you guys appreciate that and we hope again i know i i can speak for lance and myself you know that these books really have just inspired and influenced the work that we do um you know, and, yeah. and we and we hope to share that with you guys and, and hope that, you know, now's it still we're, you know, we're getting itching to, to shoot, but now's the time also to kind of maybe pull, pull down some of those books from your shelf that you haven't looked at in a while and refresh uh, monographs, you know, only take 15, 20 minutes to get through. <laughs> Don't spend Unfortunately, so most, they're not 15 or 20 bucks for the most part. But. Yeah, exactly. But uh you know, hopefully that'll inspire you to continue your visions through the night. Indeed. So, um, so if you want more, if you want to, um, you know, hear about some more of these night photography books, join us on Instagram Live uh, National Parks at Night on our Instagram channel tomorrow at eight o'clock. Uh, okay. It will be Gabe and I back again, and um, we're going to you know, flip gonna, through some other books. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll go back and forth with uh, some of our own uh, our own favorites that we didn't get to talk about tonight. Nice. So we got, let's see, um, we got a lot of bunch of thanks. Ah, my dad just bought a copy of that National Geographic as well. <laughs> oh, I hope, I, I hope, That's I hope a... I get to borrow it sometime. Put it, leave in the will for me, dad. I'll come get it. <laughs> we don't have to, I don't have to beat Eunice to it. That's hilarious. You got the O. Winston link and, and the Nat Geo. All right, man. I mean, my dad probably, I listen, I grew up in a house of books. <laughs> yeah so. i i figured as much considering the that you live in a house of books right now <laughs> exactly uh, cool. exactly so right, well hey man thank thanks so much for uh for hosting tonight and yeah uh, taking us through the the blog post yeah um, well, well, you know well. it's funny when we first talked started talking about doing blog chat it's like really what are we going to talk about for an hour 45 minutes or whatever and here we are going an hour and a half almost every <laughs> yeah well it's you know we put the two of us together we're definitely break some records. Um, <laughs> I will say that tomorrow's Instagram does cut us off at an hour. So we're going to have to time it out. Yeah. <laughs> but again, right. tomorrow, guys, join us for uh, Instagram Live if you want to continue the conversation. Um, 8 p.m. East Coast Standard. We're going to look at some more books. Uh, and, and again, share your books. Spend some time in the next 24 hours. Think about some um, and, and share them with us as well. Um, and uh, thank yeah, you guys you for you can post them in the in the comments on on the YouTube, and they'll live on um, later on. And and yeah, I think, so do we have I, a submission? Do we have a submission for books for people too, or no? 
Um, well, an informal one. If somebody's got suggestions, they can certainly, certainly. send us an email. Yes, yeah, send us, or send put us it in the, put it in the put it in the comments of this video for sure. Yep, or the blog chat, blog or right. chat, cool. the blog or the blog chat, or uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks everybody. Uh, it's been fun. Thank you, Gabe, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, man. All right. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Don't forget to.